it up for K. Alico. Woo! Man, hold up, hold up. First, we want to give honor to God. Make some noise for God. G-O-D. I think we can do better than that. I'm talking about the one that woke you up this morning. I'm talking about the one that gave you breath to breathe. Make some noise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So first, I want to acknowledge Apostle Wayne T. Jackson and Dr. Beverly Y. Jackson. Our spiritual leaders. And then also, got to introduce myself. My name is Minister Carrie Lampkin and my beautiful wife, Crystal Lampkin. She's over there somewhere. Wave your hand, honey. All right, all right, all right. Can't, can't forget the DJ. Give it up for DJ Lokis. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, okay, okay. All right, so we're about to get this thing started. It's about to be lit. Man, how'd you like that, that performance from uh, my man right here, all the way from Florida? All right, all right, all right. That's God over money, newest artist. So uh, let's get it started. I'm going to introduce to you guys uh, our host for tonight. Give it up for JD and Spiff. Hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. How y'all doing? Thank you, so, thank you so much for being here. Um, but first, we'd like to thank our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because without this, this will not be possible at all. And I gotta re-acknowledge uh, Apostle Wayne T. Jackson Wayne and Dr. T. Beverly Jackson. Y. Jackson, the founders of the largest African-American owned and operated network in this nation, the Impact yeah. Network. Impact Network! Let's go. My name is JD. And I'm Spip, and we're gonna be rocking with y'all all night long. So just chill out, you know, relax. Ah, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We ain't chilling, because we lit today, baby, we lit. Turn up, turn up, turn up, let's go, let's go. Tonight we have a Power Pack show for y'all. Come to the stage, we got Lavalis Hamilton, CHH artist, and then yep. we got motivational speaker Marcus, Marcus Roberts. Roberts. And the art of spoken word by yours truly. <laughs> okay, okay, all right, we get it. And then we got the sweet sound of Notori Janae Blue. Blue. Also, before we get into that, <laughs> let's see. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. All right, this so we're going to get into a message by Royal, Royal Nation. Royal Nation, there we go. Yeah. It's, this is super powerful. So just tune in. Prepare for that. Thank it's about you. to be super powerful. It's been powerful all day. <laughs> I wake up and I wash my face. Every day I play basketball with the bros. Every day, I check my social media status. Every day, there's something that we all do that's important to us and important to how we start our day. Every day, I hang out with my friends. Every day, I surf the internet and text my besties. Prayer is just as important as our daily hygiene. It protects and cleanses our spiritual being from natural and spiritual attacks. Make the commitment today of praying every morning and witness the power of God in your life. Every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. Every day, I thank Jesus. This message was brought to you by Royal Nation, the Impact Network's Youth Initiative. Yes, 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 yes. Man, that was a super powerful message by Royal Nation, like another always. Another one. Another like one. always. <laughs> Is that kind of old to say, another one? That's kind of old? Yeah, you you showing your age. Ah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we're going to introduce, well, why don't you do the introduction? Okay, I got it. CHH artist, Lavalis Hamilton. Let's get it. All right. Uh, hey, yo. Y'all make some noise up in here for me. Let me hear you. So I'm going to tell you how this song go. When I point at you, that's going to basically be your point. Y'all got it? Let's go. Y'all gon' be thinking we trippin', y'all gon' be thinking we trippin'. You say, y'all gon' be thinking we trippin', y'all gon' be thinking we trippin'. Okay, y'all gon' be thinking we trippin', y'all gon' be thinking we trippin'. You say, say, when we pull up in the club like what? Out there showing God's love, and ain't nobody tryna turn up, tryna see if we get burnt up. But y'all gon' be thinking we trippin', y'all gon' be thinking we trippin'. Say, yeah. Yeah, look, say, y'all gonna be thinking we tripping. They wondering who are these Christians? These rappers that talk about Jesus and lyrics and talking about they on a mission. I wonder if they hypocritin'. And I wonder if they ever slipping. I wonder if what they be singing the truth is it not, then I'm not trying to listen. When you can't listen, we live but we say we not perfect, but we serve a God. Who knows that we couldn't deliver ourselves, so we sit down the sun. They probably be thinking we done like it 
we go in there, then we probably get drunk. But we live by the spirit, not live by the flesh. And there's on deck till we come with the test. And y'all gonna be thinking we tripping. Y'all gonna be thinking we tripping. You say? I don't hear you out there. Talk to me. Y'all gonna be thinking we tripping. Y'all gonna be thinking we tripping. You say? I hear you, I hear you, I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. When we pull up in the club like what? Out there showing God's love. And ain't nobody trying to turn up. Trying to say you never get burned up. But y'all gonna be thinking we tripping. Y'all gonna be thinking we tripping. You say? Let me talk to him, listen. Well, I'm so sick and tired, they can't say my rhymes about the weed you smoke and the car you drive. All the money you spend, Cal, you so fly. But none of that matters, boy, when you die. What did you leave behind? A legacy or just a memory of your existence? I know you're probably thinking I've been tripping, but I want to put something on your mind for a minute. Give me a second to let you know. Does it have it for a G? But the G got to put the OD at the end of the G. Cause you like to be OD. The only way that you gon' see what's up there. I'm here because I care and I swear. On my soul, the devil don't fight fair. Let me play something clear. Ain't nobody scared of nobody. We ain't showing no fear. Y'all gonna be thinking we tripping. Y'all gonna be thinking we tripping. You say? Hey, let me hear, let me hear. I say, y'all gonna be thinking we tripping. Y'all gonna be thinking we tripping. You say? Real loud, real loud, real loud like this. When we pull up in the club, black what? Out there showing God's love. Ain't nobody trying to turn up. To the same if we get burned up. But y'all gonna be thinking we tripping, y'all gonna be thinking we tripping. You say, okay. Hey, they be like, look at the flick of the wrist. No, look at the nails in his hands. Look at the blood streaming down from his face. Look at the thorns on his head. Look at the love that he show. Cross on his back is bigger than the one in your neck. The disrespect. I think y'all tripping. If y'all do receive all the love that he give, that's all. And for the people that don't understand, huh, I'ma pray for your understanding. Since the kingdom of God is out of space, well then I guess I gotta take him to another planet. What a love can be seen, what a love can be shown, what a love can be felt. Look, man, I say I'm tripping. It's probably true, I can't help myself. And y'all gonna be thinking we tripping. Y'all gonna be thinking we tripping. You say? I see you. Y'all gonna be thinking we tripping. Y'all gonna be thinking we tripping. You say? Real loud, real loud, real loud like this. When we pull up in the club like what? Out there showing God's love. Ain't nobody trying to turn up. Trying to say if again burnt up. But y'all gonna be thinking we tripping. Y'all gonna be thinking we tripping. You say? Make some noise. My name's Lavalis Hamilton, man. I'm excited to be here, man. I'm so excited. I want to do this song called Christian Rap because when I started doing Christian Rap, man, people told me, like, well, you can't really do that, man, because that's what the world do, and that beat sounds too secular. It's too turned. You can't do that for God, man. But guess what I told them? Just ask me, say, what you tell them? I don't care. <laughs> Simple as that. So I told them, I said, look, man, look. I went hard for the devil when I was in the world. When I went to parties, I was lit. I was turned. I was excited. Like y'all sitting chilling, man. I was, man, I was up moving around. I was the life of the party. So when I came into Christ and I came into what all he done for me, I was like, ain't no way I'm going to go hard for the devil like that and not come into God and go harder. So this song says, we can go hard like this. We can go hard like this. Let me kill you say. Y'all better rock with me. Hey, we can go hard like this. We can go hard like this. Let me hear y'all say it. We can go hard like this. We can go hard like this. Um, we can go hard like this. We can go hard like this. Let me hear you say it. We can go hard like this. We can go hard like this. Okay, y'all paying attention. Cool. I'm ready for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all smiling now. Now, I know you can't get up, but you can just nod your head real crazy for me in your seat. Hey, just nod your head like that. <laughs> Yeah. So, from the beach, you can tell I'm a rap. Spit that truth, I'ma do it. I'm a Christian, that's a rapper for Jesus, I do it. Don't care about what they say, cause they talking, but I do it. Because I'm about that life. Nah, I don't do it. And yo, that's spread them, cause they scared, man, cause we here. What get used to us, because we ain't going nowhere. 
We that new asthma taking over y'all air, man. Walking around in Cape Town, unashamed and fearless. Wait, wait, give me the mic, cause they believe in the hype. Think it's all about the money, good night. You're dead bone, cause we're living the right to stay focused. Live for Christ, everything in the kill, they want to see you feel. But we like, you don't know when the killer will, no well. If you're gonna kill us, then we'll kill us well. Cause we're living the die for Christ. If you're gonna do that, do that well. Done, my servant, welcome home. That's what the father gonna say as we walk inside of them gates. No, we don't play it, we live it, we say it, we say it, we mean it, we mean what we say. We ain't got no time to waste. Listen, they so confused, they be like, hold up, bro, is this Christian rap? Is this Christian rap? Nah, dawg, this ain't Christian rap. What you saying? This Christian rap? Is this Christian rap? Nah, dawg, and this y'all part right here, y'all ready? Say, say, say what you mean? We can go hard like this, we can go hard like this, what you mean? Let me hear you, say what you mean? Hey, what you mean? Say, some just don't like their rap, but I don't care because they're gonna bring that rap. Be right here, just be trapped. But I still like that boom back, this boom back. Put them in a the dustpan. If they speak in garbage, sweep them. I've been stoned so much by the church, my rapper name should be Steven. Y'all wouldn't believe it. Pharisees like to call us heathens. They say, y'all music of the devil, though we live like Jesus. Why you say that? Because the 808. Face in the trunk, got a C right way. Snap back on Levi's and ways. We ain't gotta just support what we say. Church clothes in my church clothes, don't judge us, love us. Because we don't sound like Marvin's hell. Didn't that mean that God don't love us. He loves us. Hey. Don't be hating, man. And y'all know what I can say. And one day, y'all I'm gonna make it. Nah, let me stop playing. Let me get back to it. This the reason I do this music. Because folks is lost. And through this music, they can be found if we lead them right. And so don't focus on the beat. Just listen for Christ. Hold the part of this Christian rap. Is this Christian rap? Nah, no, daughter, this ain't Christian rap. What you saying? This Christian rap? Is this Christian rap? Nah, no, daughter, this ain't Christian rap. I got y'all part ready. Let's go, let's go. What you mean? We can go hard like this. We can go hard like this. Hey, what you mean? We can go hard like this. We can go hard like this. Hey, what you mean? We can go hard like this. We can go hard like this. Hey, what you mean? We can go hard like this. Spit for God like this. Yeah. I heard some people feel some type of way. Cause we don't want to smoke our lives away. Popping on that Molly trying to get laid. We just want to introduce y'all to... We come over here, cause they gotta put their mental, put their piece down, pick a piece up, stop pissing. You ain't got a shooter, you ain't got a bigger shooter. If you want a bigger shooter, go into the NBA, get your IBO, NBA. It's more to your life than selling, yay. Man, be an entrepreneur and make your own cake. But when you make it, let me make it the bigger than God. Stay humble, kill pride, give a That's called time, make your life every day. At the sacrifice, keep your eyes on God. Not a maker, they wouldn't understand God's plan for you. You gotta get to rap, but they telling you, you can't rap, this what the devil do. Woo! They must not know that when we flow, we talking about the Christ. And we both enough to go with darkness showing light. Who is who is you? Who is who is who is you? To tell me I can't rap for the one who saved my life. Well, I'ma do it, I'ma do it, I'ma do it. Jesus came and died for me. He didn't die for my music. So my music ain't saved. It's the person that do it. And because my life been changed, that's the reason my music, my music, my music ain't the same no more. That's why I don't talk about the same things no more. All I talk about is Jesus and his principles. That's the reason that can Views, bro. They don't even know that this be this Christian rap. If this Christian rap, now nah, that is ain't Christian rap. What you saying? If this Christian rap, if this Christian rap, y'all ready? Let's go be it. Say, say, say what you mean? We can go hard like this. We can go hard like this. Hey, what you mean? We can go hard like this. We can go hard like this. Hey, what you mean? We can go hard like this. We can go hard like this. Hey, what you mean? We can go hard like this. Strip for God like this. We can go hard like this. We can go hard like this. Hey. Hey, watch your <laughs> Yo, I see the bro. I hey, see the bro. Nice. Y'all see the bro? Hey, how y'all enjoying the show tonight? Is it lit? I mean, it's turned up, right? Is it it's lit turned or up. is it lit? It's turned up. Let's get it. Let's go. <laughs> and we have even more coming up for you guys, so stay tuned. Man, this dude is an amazing speaker. I'm telling you, if you're not motivated by the time you leave, oh, something wrong. Tell me. But right now, we're going to get into it. Oh, okay, okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, all the way from Houston, Texas, we got motivational Mark speaker Marcus Roberts. Roberts. <laughs> Let's go. Your life is a message. As a brother, as a sister, 
as a daughter, as a son, your life is a message. What you do, how you lead your life, simply passing someone and speaking can lift up their day. Picking up a piece of trash off the floor insinuates integrity and character that tells someone else or it pays for it in their life. My, my message was always one of leadership. When I left my hometown of Luling, Texas in 2000 to go play football for Baylor University, I had this one goal, and that was to be a leader, to help change the culture. But I quickly found out that there was only two things existing at that time, to do enough to get by or do nothing at all. So I had to make a choice, and my choice was just to conform. I started following my friends and my peers, which led to me being upset, big chip on my shoulder, mad at everyone else, pointing fingers and blaming them for my circumstances, for what I was not doing. Everybody else except the one person who was in control, me. Losing, that's what I experienced. Anger, depression. I ended up even being suspended for a game. Until I, one day I ran into this moment where I just got fed up with nothingness. This routine of me going and doing nothing and not adding up to me being to where I wanted to be. Entertaining drugs, entertaining girls, entertaining alcohol. That's what it was all about, but not doing the work to get to where I wanted to be. So I decided, you know what, there needs to be a change. And that started with my actions. Started getting in the front of the lines started going hard at the reps. I stopped looking at my friends to see what they were doing, and I started showing them what energy needed to be enacted, what energy that we needed, how to go hard at the reps, leading instead of following. All of a sudden, I started noticing, you know what? I'm going later, I'm coming in early, I'm going later, practice wasn't even called, but I'm showing up. And then my friends started calling me, hey man, we already at the stadium, where are you? What I'm saying to you is one person, that's it. In your family, in your church, in your school, one person. That's all it takes is one person to change culture, one person to do the right thing, and, and it's infectious. What you live, what you do, invites others to be bold, to step into that person that they've been called to be, to walk in their purpose. One, that's it, and you have the power to do it. If you're upset with your circumstances, you have to do something about it. If you want different, you have to be different. That August, my teammates selected me to be team captain. I was like, wow. Little big head boy from Luland, population like 4,000 people, with guys from Florida, from California, from Houston, from Dallas. You want me to be the captain? Call home, mama, mama. Guess what? They elected me to be team captain. Oh, baby, I'm proud of you. But you know what? To whom much is given, you said it. I had to think about that. At the time, I was like young like y'all, or young in the mind. I didn't even know it was a word, but I'm just thinking. And that night I went to bed knowing that I didn't need to do anything different, but just keep being who I was that brought me to that place. Because I had already experienced what not walking in that purpose was, what losing was, what being in, in depression was. Man, I went on to be player of the week like four times. I was the offensive MVP, graduated, all that, and then no NFL. So immediately, I think I'm a failure, it's a wrap. Headed back home, and that's because I had this in the box mentality. I don't know what home is like for y'all, but home for me, when you see me and by eight of us outside, that means seven people got a pocket full of crack. If you see six of us outside, five people got a pocket full of rocks. That's just how it's going down. Everybody getting it in the box mentality. If the game can't take you, this game gonna take you. That's all we could see, that's all that we knew. We were conformed to what was around us. We were afraid of stepping outside of our comfort zone. And one day, my mama called me in the room and asked me, what you gonna do? I was like, what you mean? You gotta get out of here. I was like, oh Lord, I don't know mama. And it hurts to think about right now because it was my fault because of the things that I didn't expose my to, myself to in college. I closed off, so I didn't know about the networks. I didn't know about resumes. I didn't have all that experience that I should have because I closed my mind off to it, that in-the-box mentality. But unlike my friends, I had already came to this place before. I knew what I experienced in college, so I knew I had to step out on my own. Sometimes you gotta reach back to pull forward what you've already seen in yourself. Even at your age, you've already experienced something that is powerful where you are right now. 
I ended up moving to Houston with my mama's foot in my butt. And uh, when I got there, I quickly learned you can move to a new place, but if you don't change your mind, you'll be the same place, in, a same person in a new place. You see, God gives you all, all, all control, all power over one thing, and that's your mind, your thoughts. You're in control of that. When I got there, all people did was this. Oh, man, the coffee ain't good. I hate this office. I hate my boss. I hate this. I hate that clucking. Y'all probably hear it at school. I hate this teacher. I don't like this principal. My mama this. My brother that. Pointing, but not doing nothing about the circumstances. You not owning where you are in your place. That's what it has to be. I need y'all to repeat something with me. Can y'all do that? All right, I need you to say, I am not a product. I am the environment. I am not a product. I am the environment. I am the environment. I am the environment. You are the environment. You create where you live. You create where you exist. That's the power that you have. You see, instead of conforming and doing what they did, I said, I got to go to work. That little big head country boy got down, I became a supervisor. Next thing you know, I was a manager, and I was making four times what I was originally making out of college. Like, man, I'm sitting right here. It came to that? That's what I did? Like, oh, no, that's what you did? All right, God, I see you. And it's funny because when I went to visit college, I saw my young boys. They was like, Lulin, what's up, boy? And they hit me in my stomach. I said, man, look, I don't play ball no more, man. Don't hit me like that because it hurt. <laughs> like, man, if it wasn't for you. Man, Lula, I appreciate you. Marcus, man, you treated me like somebody when no one else did, man. You changed my life. I appreciate you for that. I'm like, dang, all that was me. I mean, all that was you through me. That's when I realized that my life is a message. You see, your life is saying something right now, as I told you, as a brother, as a sister as a son, as a daughter. Some of y'all have been, y'all are responsible for changing your parents' lives. That's what you have to own. That's what you have to be willing to walk in because that's what God has placed in you. But you have to be willing to own that and live that. What is your life saying? What is your role saying? What are you invested in? What are your actions saying to your sisters and your brothers? What are you changing in your circumstances? How are you shaking up the culture? So I'll leave you with this last question. What is your message? Thank y'all. Man, man, man. If y'all don't feel that I'm telling you there's a problem. That was Look, real. that was powerful. That was so powerful. Then give so it up powerful. for Marcus Roberts one more time, if we can, please. Yeah. That was real. Yeah. Yeah. Hey fam, you got, you got power in your voice, man, I'm telling you. You got power in your voice. Earlier he said he was an introvert, but come on, man, I don't buy it all. Y'all buy it? Because I don't buy it. Come on, Gosh. come on. He gave it to us. But anyways, it's, it's almost like Matthew 5, 14 says that you are the light of the world. That means that you have the power to uplift a generation, no matter your age, your financial situation, no matter, I mean, no, nothing is a factor. Like. The best way to show your light to the world is through Jesus Christ. And yes. I mean, man, believers do that so well. Yes. Anybody doing that, man, just applaud yourself. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Anyway, check out this message from Royal Nation. We'll be right back. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do you light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand and it gives light to all that are in the house. You are the salt of the earth. You are not created to merely blend in or selfishly exist, but to stand as a representation of God's grace and power. So let your light so shine before men, so they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. You are the light of the world. Every second that passes is a moment. Our minds try and screenshot it as if the reality we perceive is limited. I guess it just depends on what you believe, but I believe it's unlimited, which is why I really don't care anymore what people think of me. 
And I don't mean that statement unhealthily, like middle finger up saying, I don't give a, nah, what happened is that I found my identity. I realized that I am a vehicle, not the human, the flesh that drives the car. I am the car, the frame, the body, and God hijacked my body and sped off. He is within me, driving towards immortality. So when you look at me or think of me, your brain activity only formulates the physical in God. He is spiritual, so your five senses are not capable. Your thoughts, your thoughts are a prisoner of time. Your finite mind is unable to reach my soul, you see. You see, my soul is not limited to who you want me to be. It's not limited to your judgment or what you expect of me. My soul is a residence in the house of eternity. No longer sojourning, it's my home, it's where I stay. Day to day, I operate from an eternal mind state. I have a unique purpose that God specifically chose for me, so put to death what you think's best for me or, or let it live. Because one day we'll all be dead and your opinion won't matter in eternity. That's honestly why I just be doing me. Working, eating, learning, teaching, having fun. Man, everything I do is my ministry. I'm unashamed of the gospel, man, to God be the glory. Who can debunk or disprove him? Nobody. And if you think that you can, then I mean, I'll wait. Let's meet up, set a date, discuss it, and if you win, I'll denounce my faith, but I'm way too confident. No argument can dismiss his face, nor remove his hand from creation. His prints are all over matter, time, and space. He is sovereign. And that's why I am bold, just like the button, next to italicize and underline. Please do not undermine him. He is our creator. He is who we all will bow down to now or later. He was existing before the beginnings began. He chose to bring us from dead to living. He was the one with the plan. Jesus incarnate, nails in both his hands. He was spit on and rejected. His own people deflected because a savior in the spiritual was not quite what they expected. They shouted, crucify him. They said, crucify him. Death, burial. But then he resurrected. Prophecies being witnessed and watched like they were Netflix. What made him have grace and mercy for a speck of dust like me? Specks of dust like us. What value did he see? He chose to put his Holy Spirit inside the believer's body, bringing us to completion. He is the gift of salvation, a union with the creator that will last for eternity. So do you really think I care anymore what a mortal thinks of me? You see, a temporary thought won't endure infinite relevance. And since I live in him, eternity being my residence, to have a thought of me is truly no thought at all. To have a thought of me is to have a thought of him because he has the will driving towards immortality. He has the will controlling my motor skills. He has the will in God. Oh God, let it be done. Y'all ready to worship? Are y'all oh, ready come to on. worship? Hey, no, 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 no. They ain't ready. They ain't ready. They ain't ready. Are y'all ready to worship? Huh? Woo! What y'all coming for? Let's go. Are y'all ready? All right, well, coming to the stage is a woman created to worship. Ladies and gentlemen, Royal Nation, give it up for Notori Janae Blue. Woo! Let's go. How are y'all doing? Let me tell You know 
that this is the greatest story that's ever been told. How he gave his life for us when we were wretches, when we were sinners. Hallelujah. I was stuck there. I was stuck. I was swept there. Bound. I was bound. Say I was confined there. But I wouldn't stay there. Would not remain there. Say he fled. Said it broke.
as Easter season approaches, I just think about what he did for us on the cross. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So I think about him looking down at what we were doing, looking down at humanity and being frustrated. And he'd already destroyed the world once, but instead of sending a flood again, instead of sending fire, instead of destroying us again, he said, I'm going to send my son to yeah. die yeah. for them. What a marvelous thing he has done. Because there was nothing that we could do to wash away the sins yeah. of the world. Hallelujah. So if we're gospel singers, we got to sing about the gospel. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's an old song. We just rearranged it a little bit. It says, What can wash away my sin? glad about that and what can what can make me what can make me whole again nothing but the blood nothing but the blood of Jesus
away our sins. Yeah. Had we been able to do it, he would not have had to come and do it for us. Yeah. So what could wash away our sins? Nothing. Mama saved us from a lot of things, but she couldn't wash our sins away. And Daddy is a protector, but he couldn't protect us from the from death that came from sin. Only the blood of Jesus Christ was able to do it. Hallelujah. And so I'm grateful that he cared enough about us to send his son Jesus to die for us. Hallelujah. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh. So because we're grateful, I can't speak on anybody else's behalf, but because I'm grateful, there's a song that I wrote, it called, I Will Sing. Very simple, it just, it's very repetitive, it just says, I will sing until the power of the Lord comes down. I will sing, I will sing, I will sing, because this is the gift that he's given me. So I told them that I do, I'd use this gift for him to bring his power into the room so that anybody that had never encountered him before could do it. Hallelujah. Yeah, the song says, I will sing until the power of the Lord comes down. Please come down. Please come down. I will sing
presence, God. Because nothing else feels like it. Hallelujah. How we love to just bask in your glory, God. So let us feel your presence tonight. Oh, Lord, we love. 